What's up y'all, my name is Forrest Whitehead. I'm a songwriter producer here in Nashville, Tennessee, and I created this channel to help the songwriter at home produce better sounding records. I've got 10 tips that I wanna make sure that you're doing to get the most out of your music production experience in Logic Pro X. Let's hop in. All right, the first tip is color coding tracks. If you see, I've organized everything in track stacks here, and I have all of my guitars in red. I have my acoustic guitars in yellow. And the way that you do this is you pretty much take all of your audio tracks. Basically, I can uh, undo this here. I wanna flatten this stack just so you see what's going on here. So these are just my regular instruments, and I would just highlight both of them. Left click here and assign track color that brings up this color menu and you can assign it any color you want but notice how the clip regions are not changing color if you want the clip regions the same color you just come over here left click and color regions by tracks now this is the same color but what you may want to do is go ahead and left click on both these tracks and create a track stack and whenever you create a track stack it sends both of these channels through this track stack so you can fact two or more channels at once just using a bus channel or a track stacks channel. So color coding your tracks and using track stacks is definitely a pro tip. Second tip is how to slow down audio. So if we have a piece of audio here, here's a guitar. If I wanted to slow this audio down, I would come up here to my fade tool. So if I just peel this audio back and then drag my fade tool here and left click on the fade tool and select slow down, listen what it does here. It slows down, kind of has like that record scratch and I really like that. Next tip is how to use arrangement markers. Now usually whenever I'm mapping out a song, if you use the arrangement markers, you basically can copy and paste full sections just by clicking, holding, and dragging, and you can see I've doubled up my chorus here, and that's the cool thing about arrangement markers. If you just want regular markers to let you know where you're at in your song, then I suggest using just the marker function here. Let me turn off everything but the marker function. So with this marker function, I just, can just select my intro, you can listen. I can tell that this is my verse and I'll just go through and use markers on every important part of the song. That way I can know exactly where I'm at as I'm building out my production. Another quick tip is if you come up here to this menu, it opens the toolbar. And what I wanna show you how to do here is whenever you have a section, say you decide that your, your intro is too long and you want to delete half of it. Well, if you go ahead and create your cycle range here, which is this yellow bar, you could come up here, you can delete this section of the song by using cut section. Boom. So it cuts that section out and, you know, obviously that can happen anywhere. If I wanted to get rid of this turn in the middle of the song, come up here and cut this section out. I use this tool a lot whenever I'm building out. Uh, different arrangements, so make sure you know where that cut section is as you're building out your song. All right, an audio tip here is if you have an audio clip that you need to change the key of, if you drop down your region menu here, if you go to this transpose section here, I can type in a number, and if I want to increase it, a semitone, I can do plus one, and now, or if I decide I want to do it again, I can plus two. And that's an easy way to transpose your audio. You don't want to do it too much uh, or it gets sounding pretty warbly, but that's a quick and easy way to transpose audio in your tracks. Another cool thing that it took me a while before I realized that was available in Logic are the track alternatives op options. So this is a main lead vocal track. If I wanted to take, or if I wanted to have an untuned version of this vocal, um, as well as a tuned version, after I have a comp together, I can basically left click here and go down to configure track header. And what happens here is it allows what you're seeing and this track alternatives icon needs to be selected. And once that is, you'll notice these little bars come up right here. And what this does, it allows you uh, to select a, or add a new layer in a way, layers what we call them in, 
in Studio One, um, but it just creates a track alternative. So you can have different types of vocal takes or you can have different tunings if you have a more uh, tuned version of your vocal and track alternatives are super important for your workflow if you always want to have the original to come back to. Another common thing is when you're working on tracks and you're dragging in audio, sometimes you'll get a file that looks like this. Say this is a lead vocal and it drops in my track and I can tell that this is a stereo track because it's got a waveform, it's got a doubled waveform here. So I know that I want to affect my vocals as a mono track. So to fix this, what I do is I come over here to your inputs and this is your channel mode and I can select this and I change this to a mono channel. Now nothing happens uh, other than, you know, on, on this meter here, you can tell that it goes from stereo to mono. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and left click and bounce in place. And what I'm doing here is just bouncing what that track was, but I'm creating now a mono track. So that's how you get a stereo track to mono. Uh, that way you can work in it in a way that you're more familiar with. Uh, usually if I'm mixing a lead vocal, that is a mono track. So I encourage you to do the same if you ever get a stereo stem. Unless it has a bunch of reverbs printed in that stem that need to be stereo, I definitely suggest going down to a mono track. And just one instrument suggestion, you guys know that, you know, I love this quick sampler here. I think it's one of the best uh, tools here in Logic. So I just wanted to remind you, if you're not using this yet, it's so easy to come over here on Splice and drag a quick sample in here. And it's just so easy to get going with this. Uh, the options within the quick sampler uh, are, are great as far as controlling the sound, changing the pitch. If I'm doing any session logic and I'm pulling sounds from Splice, you can bet I'm using this quick sampler. So definitely dive into learning about this quick sampler right here. A very familiar production trick is just reversing the audio. I'll show you guys. It's so easy to do this. I just left click here and it has reverse on and off there. So I can reverse this whole track. That's what it sounds like. I can reverse it back by left clicking and deselect and reverse. Now it's the same way it was before. Another way to reverse is come over here to this menu here and you'll find that it has a box where it says reverse and you can see that the audio file reverses instantly. No matter which way you s decide to do this, whether you come over here to this region or if you just left click on the audio file and select reverse. And last but certainly not least, whenever you get done finishing the production of your song, everything is mixed up the way that you want it. Uh, a cool thing happens here if you come over here to mix, create track automation, create volume fade out to main output. Now what just happened here? You'll see at the bottom of my session, I have this uh, automation lane from my main output and it gives me a fade here. That way you can make sure there are no instruments and crazy sounds hanging out at the end of your mix. So those are 10 tips every producer should know. Uh, that's quite a bit for one video, but I encourage you to rewatch this video and really learn all of these tips because these are definitely tools that I use uh, almost on every session that I'm working on when I'm working in Logic Pro X.